Welcome to my channel and my playlist Sewing Made Easy. My name is Lilo Siegel and it is my pleasure to show you some nice sewing ideas and to make jobs for you much easier. I created for myself a real nice pocket just a couple of days ago. And as to my opinion, it's really turned out so different and so nice that I would like to share it with you and show you how to do it. I will explain to you in this video how you got to do the pattern for it and of course how you will cut and then stitch the particular pocket. Well, you know, pockets usually are very, very useful. Not so often they're for the looks because many, many times they're just invisible. Now this particular pocket, you will find out it's an eye catcher because when you put this particular pocket on a garment, it will show and it will look fantastic. Are you ready? Then let me show you how you can do it for yourself as well. So if you want to do this particular pocket, of course you need your material where you want to put this pocket on, maybe some lace for the bottom edge, and a cordal of your choice or a ribbon of your choice. And we have to start by making a pattern. The pattern will be in the size that you would like to make this pocket. I'm telling you my sizes here, but that does not mean that you have to do this particular size. And that is why I'm explaining to you how I work out the pattern pieces so you can make it in any size you want to. You can see I've mark this already, my widths for my finished pocket will be 15 centimeters and the height towards the lowest point for the finished pocket will also be 15 centimeters. The curve you can draw however you want the pocket to look like, if it's flatter or deeper, the curve, whatever. So make yourself this pattern because in the moment you've done that, you take another piece of paper Draw your pattern piece directly onto this. Now add all the way around this edge one centimeter seam allowance. And for the top, you put another two centimeter seam allowance on. Then you measure from this point all the way around on your new drawn line to this corner, the length, because this will be the length of the piece of material you will cut in a moment. And this is for the hem on the top. So my length here is 44 centimeters. But like I'm saying, if you will draw this in different sizes, you will have a different measurement here. But in the moment you've done your main pattern, you add this one centimeter around and two centimeters for the top. And this will be your measurements that you will need. So now, you cut a right angled piece of material in 44 centimeter lengths, like I done, because that's my measurement. And I worked out that the height of my pocket should go on about nine centimeters where it's being closed. And therefore, my height that I cut, I add another three centimeters. Nine. I said I want it to be closed definitely as a pocket and I add three centimeters. That means the piece I'm cutting is 12 centimeters high. 44 by 12 for my measurements. Yours could be different. And as you can see on my piece here, I already on the small sides did a small seam of twice rolling in a centimeter. I stitched it over this one side I finished the edge off and the other, the opposite, I ironed over half a centimeter and one and a half because this will be the tunnel for the cordal to pull the pocket in the middle nicely together. And why I did these first, these sides, is because if I would do the top first, I wouldn't have the hole here to be able to pull my cordal in. Then you have to take your garment piece where you want to stitch the pocket on and exactly in the position where you want to put it you will mark all the way around from corner again to corner where you want to position the pocket and as soon as you've done all that preparation we go with these pieces to the sewing machine.
So let's start with the most easiest job. As you iron the top edge over already, like I said, first half a centimeter, then another one and a half, it's nicely prepared. So you will stitch along this top now, along the edge approximately one millimeter. So it's a nice, even and tidy looking seam. Now I take my lace, fold over on the top towards the bottom, which means to the inside, one centimeter over, and stitch now approximately one centimeter away from the edge with my, the biggest stitch that I have on my machine, because I would like to ruffle this up. And when I get to the end of my approximate length, I will not do a back and forward stitching and I will not cut off the thread short, but I will pull it out the machine out so I have some threads left to ruffle my lace. Now I take my garment piece with my drawing where the pockets got to go and I start exactly on my first point there and I'm putting my lace, which I had folded over in the beginning, exactly on top of my line, even exactly with the beginning of my drawing, so that my ruffle seam is lying exactly on top of my drawing line. Because exactly in that position, I will also stitch now around this pocket, which means my seam from the lace is lying on top of my drawing. And I start right away ruffling a little bit into the side because I don't want it to lie too flat on there. I want it to really look very cute all the way around the pocket. Then take your time when you do this stitching now. Keep on looking underneath where is your drawing and look on the top where is your seam and slowly go all the way along so line is on top of the seam or the opposite way around. And when you get to the curve, you will see you will probably have to ruffle quite a bit more of the lace in. And how much this will be, it's of course up to you. This can be even more like I'm doing it. But as long as you do get nicely around the curve and that you have enough material there. And that's the way you're going to continue all the way around and really do take your time. The pocket is actually done quite fast. You will find that in the moment you've started it. As long as you have a little bit of patience for it and do it with loving and care and you will see it's just going to be gorgeous when you get finished with it. And when you get to the other side where it's straight, have a look how much width you ruffled into the first side so even this out, so you might find if you pulled in too much already, you just take a little bit more out, so it will be even and similar looking to the other side. Now, as my lace piece is quite a bit longer than what I actually need, and I haven't cut the length yet, then it's easy to do to first stitch all the way to the top anyway, but don't do a backward stitching, so your stitches are still loose there. Because now when I take it out, I can see exactly that I need another centimeter to fold over. So exactly there is where I'm cutting it. Now I'm folding it in and now I can firmly stitch it all the way to the top. So my lace is totally finished on my garment already. And actually, I must admit, I've forgotten something very important to say to you because before I put my lace on and when I was doing the marking for the pocket in which position it's got to go, I also marked exactly on the bottom in the middle, I put a mark there, you can see that. And exactly the same you got to do to your straight right angle piece, fold it in half so you know this is exactly the middle from your pocket because that will help you and make it so much easier now to get this piece in the right position. So take your right angle piece, put the right side down on top of your lace and make sure you're covering the lace up. Rather have it be underneath another millimeter jumping back because it wouldn't be nice if it would be overstanding. 
Now I'm actually going to be stitching again exactly on the seam. With other words, my new seam should be more or less exactly on top of my seam underneath. And in case if you didn't do this a full centimeter underneath the sewing, then because I allowed one centimeter of seam allowance on the blue part, on the main material part, I will have to lie it over about two millimeters in my case here. And now, as this is a straight piece we're stitching on, it's actually quite easy to do. And immediately I can have a little check on will my two marks points will on top of will they be on top of each other because that's where I got to go. So put your lace nice and flat so you don't get funny crinkles stitched in. Maybe do it with a big stitch in the beginning in case if you have to open a little bit up again that'll make it easier. And you see now here are my two marks underneath and they're exactly on top of each other. And I just continue exactly in that way and always keep looking. Where is my seam underneath? And that's where my needle now is got to go in again and covering up exactly that part. With other words, I have seam on top of seam all the way to the end. And when you get here to the end, also make sure that you're covering up your lace part that you rather be again approximately one millimeter standing over. Do a good back and forward stitching and have a look. Are you satisfied with everything? Because more or less this pocket is finished already. Now I have to take my cordial and pull the cordial in my little tunnel that I got up here and then to be able to pull my pocket together in the middle as I all had it planned from the way beginning on. Oh, that looks good already. I like it. But now there's one more little thing you can do if you wish, because we have these seams inside here, you see, and that might be bothering you, especially as this pocket slightly falls down in the middle, so you can see these corners sticking out, and that's not going to be a problem for us either. So what we have to do is if you have a material that doesn't like to rip out, you can just cut the corner off. Or in my case here, I will fold it underneath a little bit and now go with a couple of stitches exactly in the seam that I got there anyway. So this is going to be totally invisible. I do exactly the same on the other side. I push this corner way under and put a couple of backward stitching right on top of that. So that's taken care of and my packet now is really finished. So you can see the finished product, this lovely little pocket that is really a highlight for any kind of garment you can make. One important thing that I should mention to you as well is if you do this kind of pocket, of course you can also do it without the lace on the edge, no problem, I had to say that as well. But what is important is, it doesn't matter which kind of material you choose, but it's important that the material is relatively thin, because you got to consider the lengths I've cut on this particular pocket here is 44 centimeters. And when I pull this together, as this was a right angled piece, remember, this is also 44 centimeters that I have to pull together here. So if I have a very thick material, I will not get this hole so little and so tiny right there in the middle. And that is why it has to be a relatively thin material. But everything else, you can make this in no time. It's really nice and it's, as I mentioned before, a highlight to look at. So that means my video for you for today is finished. I like to say goodbye. I like to say stay healthy. Stay tuned with me. Give me your comments from all over the world. I'm looking forward to them. And I wish you all the best. Until next time. Bye bye. Yours, Lilo.